All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope the voice is coming good from your side. I don't see many people yet here. Please invite your friends. And today our topic is a question is mentioned in the internet. And you know, always when we uh, speak about something, we uh, we take it as it is. You know, we don't add uh, makeup to it. So I found this question kind of interesting, and I wanted to discuss uh, this topic with you all. The Muslims, they work hard, as we know, trying to convert as many as they can into the cult of Islam. And sometimes they are successful. And today we are going to discuss how a Muslim can be successful to decide to to uh, to make you believe in such a cult, horrible cult like Islam. I will show you what a Muslim person said about this, and then we can talk about it. First of all, there is millions of people are leaving Islam, and nobody talk about it because. Those who leave Islam themselves, they don't want to talk about themselves leaving Islam for because Islam is a gang. It's a dangerous religion. If you leave Islam, you should be killed according to Islam. So, Islam is losing ground everywhere, especially in the Middle East. If you go and see in the Middle East how many people they are so disgusted but the cult of Islam, you will not believe it. And you know, the Middle East is where I'm coming from. But today we will discuss how somebody, he's a Christian, he might convert to Islam. How such a thing, such a horrible thing can happen. In front of me here, there is a website I wanted to share with you. This is from Quora.com. What is the common reason for converting to Islam? And here you have Muslims giving you answers about this. We can read all of it, but I will read the interesting one, which is written by Muslims. This lady here, her name Buthayna Yunus Muslima. She is answering why somebody will convert to Islam. She said, it will it it answer all the questions clearly this is kind of comedy or this is real islam answer questions clearly like what 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 a question what a question islam answer clearly this is my challenge to the muslims even allah you do not know who is he even the word allah you do not know what it does mean even the word israel you have no idea what it is even you do not know the Quran is very contradicting. Once Allah, He say He created the stars first, and once He says He created the earth first. Islam answer questions. What questions? Just yesterday we were showing you the verse in the Quran, chapter five, verse fifty-one, where it says, "Ask not questions." How Islam answer any question? And here we go. <clears throat> We are live on air. If there is anyone can tell me how Islam answer a question of anything, call me, please. If you are a Muslim and you are a person who believe that Islam answer questions, please give me a call immediately. Islam never answer any question. This is why the Muslims, when they explain the Quran, they say Allah knows best. Allah knows best. Even the Quran itself, if we go in the Quran, one of the funny things about the Quran, because it's made by someone, he is a thief himself, he has no idea what he's talking about. So he come with an idea that the Quran is a book, nobody knows what it does mean, save Allah. So how you say to me, it answer all the questions. If we have a book, nobody knows what it's mean, save Allah. What I can do with such a book? You read here with me, it says the following. <clears throat> Uh, 
that Allah he revealed both verses the one who are clear and the one which is not clear but nobody knows what the meaning of those verses if we go here let us see And this is the Muslim translation, not my translation. You will see the Muslim saying clearly that there is big part of the Quran. People, they seek to explain it. People, they seek to explain it. But none knows its explanation, save Allah. Okay. How Quran, how Islam is giving us answers when you are saying to me that Allah said, Nobody knows what the mean of those verses save Allah. This is a very clear evidence that Islam is a false religion. Because if Allah He send you a book, what's the point of sending you a book? Nobody knows what it means save Allah. You tell me. So now what I will do? We are waiting for Allah for the last 1400 years to give us interpretation for those verses. What you will do now? Nobody knows what those verses mean, save Allah. So why Allah, he sent those verses? Imagine now you go and you get any of my books from Amazon. The Deception of Allah, Quran and Science, uh, Sex and Allah, whatever book. And then you ask me, hey, Christian Prince, you said in that book something. I say to you, okay. Nobody knows what this means, save Christian Prince. But aren't you a Christian Prince? And if your book, nobody knows what it does mean. So why you why you why you told us read my book? I mean, what the point? That because Muhammad is a fabricator. He is a thief. He steal, but he do not know what he stole he have no idea what he's talking about so he have no answer what are you going to ask me something i do not know how to answer it so this is was an answer for somebody cannot answer no one knows what this means save allah so what now what we would do and the funny the muslim they put for us that the first reason to convert to islam that islam answer your questions since when I am here every day asking Muslim questions and we could not find any answer for it. Even simple ones. When we asked Sheikh Rohi last week, why the Prophet, he took an oath on the Torah if the Torah is corrupt. Do you remember what he said? He said the Prophet, he took an oath in it, but he meant the other book. This is there's no there's no need to know or to to think to be a genius to know that this is a this is a false man a man who take an oath in a book he put his hand on a book and he swear by that book but yet he don't mean that book and the Muslim they say to us to us that they have no shame to say that which means Muhammad is nothing but a hypocrite liar he is the devil he he swear in a book but he don't mean it. Islam answer the and the questions is that an answer for my question why the prophet he swear in a book you don't believe in it the answer is perfect Muhammad is a hypocrite he's a false man the first verse in the Quran how many time we ask the Muslims why the angel squeeze Muhammad the first the first day in Islam the angel supposedly came to Muhammad he squeezed Muhammad three times we asked the Muslims okay why the angel squeeze him three times they don't know why he told him to read they don't know an idiot he told me oh he meant to recite recite what you idiot the Muhammad he received nothing yet recite is something in the memory 
the word recite is to repeat something you have already in your memory and Muhammad he did not receive any Quran yet do we have a Quran in the memory so how we will say to him recite if it is recite and Muhammad repeated the same word how he can say I cannot recite he just did <laughs> guys if I say to, to you eat and you say I cannot eat what do you mean you cannot repeat after me I, I eat you just you just say the word eat so it doesn't make sense read I cannot read and the Muslim they say oh he meant to him to recite so are you saying that your prophet and Muhammad uh, Muhammad and your God they have a miscommunication are you saying that your God was not able to explain himself to Muhammad what, what does that mean and why he's saying to him read if he may recite what about saying the word recite and how he can recite something he never heard it before he don't have it in the memory and if it is read how he said to him read to some to, to someone he do not know how to read unless he want to make a miracle but yet Muhammad after being squeezed three times still he cannot read he cannot write so I want to know what is the question Islam answer if there is any Muslim in the bushes I see that many of you are getting more inspired by my program I received this image today uh, by one of you okay hello any Abdul <laughs> so do we have any Abdul he can tell us how Islam can answer any question and you know what just to show you that Islam is very stupid I will let you I will let you 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 tell me what the question you want me to ask you is that fair guys you tell me what the question you want and I challenge you to answer the question you are the one asking me to ask you what do you say any Abdul do you see how sure I am you call me Muslims and you tell me what to ask you and I will ask you the question you are the one asking me to ask you and I challenge you to answer the question you told me to ask you <laughs> how more how more challenging this can be any Abdul Do you see how easy to defeat Islam? Look how many Muslims are in the chat. But none of them want to call me to, to tell me to ask him a question. You choose the question. But because they knew anything they say about their, their cult, they cannot answer it. Anything, anything. It doesn't matter what they say. This is why I'm saying they just, just tell me the question you want me to ask you. Since when this religion have answers? If we ask the Muslims now, what the word Allah mean? I saw a video of an idiot. He speak about Allah, that the word Allah is the same as Elohim. I mean, you must be an idiot with certificate degree to say that. What Elohim have to do with Allah? The Muslims, they are worshipping unknown God. They are copy-paste, disconnected, even with the names of their God. Allah is not the name of their God. But how you can teach somebody he want to live in their copy-paste rule? This is Allah. The first two letters in the name, they are not part of the name, period. This one, let us zoom in. This letter and this letter 
are not part of the name. The two letters are A and L. In English, A and L. What does that mean? L. L. L in Arabic today, in the use of Arabic today, it's mean the equal to the. to switch to English hold on that however the origin of this is not really that the origin of this is the word God which mean L is equal to the word God This is why you see Baal, Baal, Baal. Hmm? Even in the old Aramaic, in the old Hebrew, in the old etc., the word Al was the word God, and then by time it became Eel, which is this. Eel. Eel and Al is the same. This is why you will find a lot of names, ancient names, they end with Al and some they end with Il. Depend in how old those names are. The older they are, the more it is going to be as Al. So the word Israel, Israel was not really Israel, it was Israel. The word Ishmael was not Ishmael, it was Ishmael. The word Mikael, the word, uh, you know, etc. All is Al, why? Because Al is word meaning God, it's not a name. So now we have Allah. Allah. A L La A L is a word meaning God. This is a word mean God. So what is the name of the God? Is La. The Abdul when he say that the Christian they say Elohim, Elohim is not a name, you idiot. It's a plural name of the word God. You see how stupid they are? The word El is not the name of any God. It can be used by the pagan, it can be used by anyone, the same as the word God in English. It is a generic word for the word God. So you can be a Hindu and you use it. You can be a pagan and you use it. You can be a Christian and you use it. And this word used by many, many religions. However, if we search the 99 names of the names of the God of Islam, we will not find any of them have any connection to Eel, as you see here with us on the screen. Eel. In the same time, which make it more funny, Eel is the most common name or word is used in the Quran but yet is not coming as a word because the liar the thief Muhammad when he stole the words he did not know that this is an independent word so he said I have an angel who came to me his name is Jibreel but Muhammad never told the Muslims what Jibreel mean and here my challenge any Muslim can tell me what Jibreel mean you don't know any Muslim can tell me what Israel mean they don't know what Mikael mean they don't know even Isa what Isa what what the Messiah mean they don't know what the word Injil mean they don't know they don't know 
Have you ever heard of religion have answers more than I don't know? Equal to Islam. This is the only answer they have. We do not know. Do you see it? Where the word Jibreel coming from? Any Muslim can tell me what Jibreel mean? Is that an Arabic word? You see, if you notice that the, the, the stupidity is amazing. In the last week, we have some Muslims who call us and says, Allah speak only Arabic. So why is you calling Jibreel Jibreel? Jibreel is not, is not an Arabic word. Mikael is not an Arabic word. Ishmael is not an Arabic word. Injil is not an Arabic word. Israel is not an Arabic word. So all the names are not Arabic, but Allah, he speak Arabic. So now if we ask the Muslims, what is the name of your God? Because they are foolish. They have no idea. They say to you, Allah, the fact this is not true. When you say Allah, you are saying God, la. this is not the name. The name is la. And we can prove that easy. If we go in the Quran, let us do this. To show you the ignorance of the Muhammadan. We switch to Arabic. Please invite your friends and don't forget to subscribe if you like what we do. And don't forget to unsubscribe if you don't like what we do. This is a chapter one in the Quran. I will open it in Arabic. Verse number one and verse number two. Anyone notice what the difference between verse number one and verse number two when it's come to the name of the God of Muslims? Look with me. Immediately the name changed. Immediately. Here, this letter disappear. Here, this letter here appear. So what happened? Why this one have a letter? This one does not have a letter. Remember a name. You cannot take letters out of it. If my name is uh, Isa, that's it. My name is Isa. You cannot take uh, any letter off. If my name is George, you cannot take the G off. That's it. That's my name. Otherwise, you are changing it. You can take letters off of a word if it is not part of it, if it is an addition. So what happened now? Why the name of Allah is it changing? And this is in two verses in the raw. Like, you know, they are after each other. What happened? The answer is very simple. Verse number two, it says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbul Alameen. Alhamdu li lah. Li lah. Li in Arabic means two. Li is equal to So Alhamdulillah, Alhamdu in Arabic mean thanks or appreciation. And then lah, so Alhamdulillah, that will make it as the following. Let us rewrite the sentence. Thanks. Oops. Li, which is equal to two, sorry, two, not two, in la. Thanks to la. This is why here we don't see A L Allah. For here we are not saying the word Al, which is mean God. Here we are saying the word straight. Thanks to la. Who is La? This is the God. Up in the verse before, it is coming as Allah. Al La. Al A L mean God. La is God name. So thanks. This is a verse praising in the name of Al La, which means the God La, Al Rahman, Al Rahim. 
Now, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim is a different story. And this is additional proof that Islam is a corrupt, false religion. This is verse number what? This is verse number one, correct? Isn't it verse number one? So, in verse number one, we will find Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. Okay, almost in every beginning of any chapter in the Quran, except Al Tawbah, as an example, uh, it doesn't have Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Okay, but the word Ar Rahman never exists in Islam until Muhammad received more than half of the Quran. So, how this word appear in every chapter? To prove our point, look at this. The word Ar Rahman is a name Muhammad he stole, additional to the name of Allah. There was a guy. His name is Rahman al Yamama, and he claimed to be a prophet of God. His name Rahman. One day, Muhammad he received a letter from this guy, who claimed to be a prophet, and later the Muslims killed him. So Muhammad, he decided to write a letter back and he suddenly, he added the same name was in the letter of that guy. So he said, let me show you the other verse, which is more clear. Read with me carefully. Chapter 17, verse number 110. Say, call upon Allah or call upon Ar Rahman by whatever name you call upon him, for him belong the most beautiful names. What happened? What that's mean Muhammad never mentioned that name Ar Rahman before. What, what, what is the purpose of this verse? The people they said to him, Who is a Rahman? Who is a Rahman? If we go to the book interpretation or the, the Asbab al Nuzul, this is a chapter 17, verse number 110. The book of Asbab al Nuzul. Asbab al Nuzul means the reason for the verses to come down. It's a book explaining what is behind those verses, like what the story behind it. All right. Uh, let us see. After Muhammad, he mentioned the word the beneficent, which means Ar Rahman. After he said that, the Arab. Idolater then com com commented, saying, We know the merciful, which means a Rahim, but who is the a Rahman? The Arab, they never heard Muhammad saying that before. And then they said, As a response, Allah exalted is he revealed the verse. That they are asking you who is Allah Ar Rahman? Well, to Allah belong all the beautiful names. But here we have a problem. If Muhammad he have that name Ar Rahman in every chapter in the Quran, Ar Rahman. But this is the first time the Arab heard him saying the word of Rahman. If we go and see the book based on the revelation, Quran according to revelation. Let me find you. The list, because many people do not know that Islam, uh, uh, the Muslims agree that the Quran they have it today is not the same it used to be in the time of Muhammad. This is what they say, not me. 
right? All right. If we go and search in the Quran, this is the Quran according to Revelation. This is the Quran according to Revelation. Here you will notice it's a surah number. Surah number mean as it is in the Quran today. So number one in the Quran in the time of Muhammad is number 96 in the Quran today. You see how a huge difference is? Do you see how huge? Very huge. So if we try to find chapter number 17 according to the Quran today and compare it according to Revelation, we will find astonishing news. Let us search what is number 17 in the Quran today is equal It is equal to the, the to chapter number 51. Sorry, 50. Do you see it? Which mean Muhammad. And by the way, the Muslim they changed the name of the of the chapter too. So now in the Quran today it's called the chapter of Al Isra. But the fact it is the chapter of Bani Israel. So chapter 17 in the Quran today, it is a chapter 50 in the original Quran, if it is ever exist. But hold on, that will be a problem. Anyone knows what the problem? Big, huge problem. If Muhammad, this is the first time he mentioned the word Ar-Rahman. This is why the Arab, they are asking him, who is Ar-Rahman? We never heard you saying Ar-Rahman before. You know what I mean? Guys, are you getting my point? This is the first time the Arab, they are asking Muhammad, who is a Rahman? He never said that name before. But this is mean Muhammad he delivered already 50 chapter of the Quran and he never said the word Ar-Rahman ever before. So how now we have Ar-Rahman in all the Quran? You see how we get Muhammad busted easy? And Quran is nothing but a book of fabrication. Later the Muslim they start adding Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim to the Quran in every chapter. If Muhammad was saying from the first time of his life, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, nobody will ask him why you are. This is a question should be asked in the beginning when he said it first time, but not after fifty chapter, which means half of his life as a messenger. Ar-Rahman is a person who is from the Arabian Peninsula. He called himself ar-Rahman. His God is Rahman, and not only that. Even the word Muslim, Muhammad, he stole it from that guy. This is why the, the, the Muslims, they call him Musaylama, to make fun of him. And when Muhammad, he mentioned that Ar-Rahman is one of the names of his God, what is the excuse for him to make it the name of his God? He said, all the beautiful names belong to Allah. <laughs> but this means this Allah don't have names. Guys, read me carefully. This is what the Muslims saying, not me. At the beginning of Revelation, the messenger of Allah, Allah bless him and give him peace, used to write in the name of Allah. So there is no Rahman, there is no Rahim. Do you see it? Do you see it, guys? 
There is no Rahman, there is no Rahim. Until this verse was revealed. <laughs> but this is revealed in chapter number 50. So we should have at least 50 chapter in the Quran does not have the word Ar-Rahman or even Ar-Rahim. Are you getting the point? Now where we can find the Quran which have 50 chapters does not include Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Where we can find this Quran is located. Obviously the Muslims they added those things later. Remember, we said to the Muslims, any Muslim is more than welcome to call me and he is going to ask me to ask him a question about Islam. Which means, you tell me the question you want because I challenge you to give me a question, I can ask it to you and you can answer it. This is how stupid this cult is. It doesn't matter how simple the question is, your Muslims cannot answer. And this is why I'm saying, you, you tell me what the question you want to ask you. Imagine, you Muslims call me. And tell me, I, I want you to ask me this question about Islam, and I will answer it. Even that you cannot do, for this is a very stupid cult. It doesn't matter how simple the question is. So when a Muslim says to us, Islam, give us all the answers, answers for what? Do Islam solve any problem in earth? I mean, what is major problem in this earth right now? Security, terrorism. If not Islam, we used to go in the airplane and nobody check our bags. This is a fact. This is the truth. Enter 9-11. Your family can walk with you to the door of the airplane. And there is no security. If not Islam, nobody will be worried about his daughter playing in the street being kidnapped. If not Islam, we will not see beheading videos. Who is the one to be hidden videos? The Buddhas, the Hindus, who? Islam have answers for what? As we speak now, there is a guy who took some hostages in Paris. Every day there is a new attack somewhere. When a Muslim he tried to present to us Islam as religion, which provide answers, I find it very funny. Because Islam provides confusion and stupidity and madness and violence. It answers all the questions about the unseen and the scene, like what? Look at this, guys. The Islam answered the question about the unseen and scene. You Muslims, you have no idea about anything of the unseen. What unseen? And anything about the scene. As an example, like, you know, should we talk about how the baby is created in Islam? Huh? Should we talk about the prophet who teaching us that if the man have orgasm, first the baby will be a boy? And he will resemble the father? Is that the scene or the unseen? Or where the sun set? Or the bird who is working as a minister for Suleiman, looking for women who have no hair in their legs? Or the ant who is, uh, who, who Suleiman heard her speech? I mean, this is the unseen, right? Is that the unseen? If we ask the Muslims, when the Quran says the man he can beat his wife, is that a solution or it is a problem? When a God, you claim that he is perfect God, he teach you that if your wife disobey you or you suspect she will disobey you, you beat her. Is that a teaching of God or this is a teaching of a scumbag? Based in what logic this answer is made? The Muslim, they say to you, 
Oh, you know what? We beat them lightly. <laughs> you see, the lies is big. You are beating her as a punishment, not as a reward. So what lightly? Are you saying you make her excited? Are you beating her by a feather? Is she naked in the bed and you want to have a cuckoo cuckoo with her? What do you mean beat her lightly? Is that a spanking? What is that? Imagine the deception. When the Quran says beat them, the Muslim they say, oh, the Quran says beat them lightly. You know what? I will shave my 20 foot beard if you can't find me the word lightly in the Quran. Any Muslim can show it to me? And what lightly can mean? You see, let us say, let us say, for the sake of argument, you beat your wife light as much as a spit. You know spit? If you spit at somebody, I mean, how light it is. Have you ever heard of somebody die or injured by a spit? But it's an insult. Is that correct, guys? Is that correct? Spit is very light. It is very light. Nobody can hurt. Nobody can get injured by a spit. It's just some water come from your mouth. How light it can be more than this, but how insulting it is. To the Muslims to deceive you, they say, yeah, he beat her lightly. First, it is not lightly, and I can show proofs and reference. And nowhere in the Quran it says that. Number two, who are you? And why you can beat them? الرجال قوامون على النساء بما فضل الله بعضهم على بعض. What does that mean? Translation, please. And as you see, I'm using the Muslim translation, so don't tell me I'm making things up. Men are in charge of women because Allah has made one of them excel on others. So it was a decision of Allah. That the man excel and because not only that because according to Islam the women is a whore and because they spend their money from their property on you how insulting that is so the man he spent money in the women so he can beat her Islam treated you as a hooker as a whore and as an idiot who is with you in the bed, and because he gave you some money, now he can beat you. He has authority over you. And look how disgusting is the excuse. Because the man, he spent some money on the women, he can beat her. What if she is the one who spent money on the man? Can she beat him? The answer, no. Do you see the double standard? Muhammad himself, he used to work for Khadija. He married this woman, an old woman, a lot older than him, for the sake of her money. The woman is at least 25 years older than him. She's rich. She had many husbands before him. She had many kids before him. Still, Muhammad, for the sake of money, he is willing to take her. It was his ticket to go up and became a master of slaves. What it does mean by others? What do you mean others? Oh, no, the, uh, the other hand, they, they mean the women. So the men are excel on the, on the women. Allah, he made the man excel on the women. And then he says, So good women are the one who are obedient. Okay. So what makes you a good woman in Islam if you are obedient? A guarding in secret which Allah guarded. Hmm. As for those whom you fear rebellion, uh -huh, admonish them and punish them in beds apart and discourage them. 
The liars, when they translate, usually they put first and second and third. The fact in the Quran never say any of that. It says you can do it all together if you want. The Quran is just telling the man what he can do with the women. You threaten her, and then you stop sleeping with her. And by the way, here, maybe some of you will say, okay, what a big deal. You see, a woman, she is married to a man. The man, he can stop sleeping with her, but he have a lot of options. He can stop sleeping with her for two years if he want, because he have many women. Muslims are allowed to, uh, to, to get married legally to four women. And he is allowed to have sex with as many as he wish of his slaves. So the man, he will not feel that he is missing something. The woman, she will be humiliated. She will be jailed in her room. It says, fil madaja. The madaja is the bedroom and the bed. So you jail them in their rooms. You scream at them. You shout at them. And then you scourge them. If they obey you, then seek not a way against them. So what is the what is the purpose of beating the women? Is to make her obedience. And the Muslim, as she's saying to us in that website, that Islam answer the seen on the unseen. So do you think really that Islam is solving a family problem here or Islam is making it worse? Do you think a woman who is obeying her husband in Islam now, she is being obedient or she is being scared from being beaten by her husband who is an idiot in the village? Is she nice now obeying the husband because she is convinced or because she is afraid she is going to be spanked and tortured? Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? No fear? So why you want to beat her? Guys, no fear. There is no fear. It says in the front of us, discourage them until they obey you and he is saying to us there's no fear <laughs> so if 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 there is no fear you see just to show you how stupid what the muslims they try to answer us in the same verse it says the word fear do you see it whom you fear rebellion which means they did not even do rebellion yet just you fear you suspect maybe they will like sound fishy for me we beat them and then <laughs> if they obey you, what is going to stop the, at the attack on the women? When the Muslim man stopped beating his wife, if she obey, and this guy, he said, no, it's not based on fear. You don't fear Islam? You fear everything in Islam. You are a coward, you are a liar. You fast Ramadan because you fear. Inside the house, you eat like a goat. You go outside, you, you play that you are not eating. I am from the Middle East, my friend. I'm an Arab. I know how Muslims live. Stop being a liar. Nobody drink alcohol as much as Muslims. Nobody addicted to drugs and sex and prostitution as much as Muslims. And you say to me, we don't fear Islam. In the street, you wear not white clothes. You carry the Quran with you. You try to present yourself that the man of God hello we know it all he is not a Muslim oh, okay so he is a trolling all right okay uh, I thought the one who said that is the guy who said come to Islam there's a guy his name is come to Islam I was talking to the guy who said his name come to Islam. Where is? Here we go. You see his name. There's a guy. His name is come to Islam. Yeah. So I miss between uh, Islam is false and come to Islam. All right. Anyway. So, Islam does not solve family problems, and I can show you how stupid Islam is. Was Muhammad the most wise man in Islam able to solve his family problem? When you make marriage 
of many women that will cause problems immediately. Look what happened to Muhammad. The wives of Muhammad, they have a strike against their perverted husband. If you two turn in repentance to him, to him, to who? To Allah. To what? Two parties. There's two wives of Muhammad. They have two parties. They are Republican and Democrat. You believe it? Your heart are indeed inclined. But if you back up each other against him, him who? Muhammad. Truly Allah is his protector. And Jibreel and the righteous one among those who believe. And furthermore, the angel will back him up. All of this to back Muhammad up against two of his wives. Do you see how much Muhammad, he is good in solving his family problem? Listen, listen carefully. Listen carefully. This is very serious. Muhammad, he have a problem with his wives. The wives are doing a strike saying death to Muhammad. Throwing rocks, potatoes, tomatoes at his windows. They found him cheating, sleeping around. He is a cheater. He's a liar. They cannot take it no more. So they have a strike against the prophet. And the prophet, he lost control. The funny, they say to you, Muhammad was an amazing leader. Muhammad was an amazing scumbag. Even his household, he cannot control. So the prophet... He give up and now he need the help of Allah. Allah is the toy of Muhammad. Let us say it's the magical ring. Anytime he wants something to happen, he wants to force it to happen because he cannot make it happen. He say Allah said. So look what Muhammad did. Allah he sent a verse. saying to you you better repent you better repent the verse of Allah is coming it's coming it's coming stop I received the verse. If you don't repent, if you don't repent right now to Allah, repent from your heart and be in obedience to the Prophet. And if you don't repent, and back up each other. Do you know who's going to be against you? Are you aware that Allah will be in the size and the side of Muhammad? Allah will be his protector. Allah will be his protector? Uh, is that enough? No, the movie continue. Yes, it is you, two women. Two women, you are short. But yet the Prophet, he need the protection of Allah. And not only Allah. Jibreel too. Yes, Jibreel is coming. I see his ambulance coming from far away. And not only Jibreel. Every Muslim around the world, 1.4 billion, every righteousness Muslim will support him. And not only that, yes, we are not done. And furthermore, all the angels, they will take his side. Like, what the heck? All of this against two women? Allah and the angels. And Jibreel and 
billion Muslim against two women, they are not even five foot tall? If two women can do that to Muhammad, what about 13? I, I'm telling you, women are dangerous, as you see. Look at this. The poor Muhammad, he needed the help. The United Nations Council, they met together according to the request of the Prophet Muhammad. And they told him, Prophet, we give up. We cannot do anything. So he said, okay, hold on. I got a better solution. Allah is going to support me. And because Allah not always is strong and powerful, you know what happened in Israel, Israel, you know, I mean, it's not working. It's not enough. So we need the protection of Hamas and the protection of every believer, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, all of them, all of them together. Huh? And then because Al-Qaeda and Hamas are being beaten by American and Israeli, mm, it's not enough. We need Jibreel. So we have to add Jibreel to the table. Jibreel is very powerful, by the way. Very powerful, but not always. And because Jibreel, sometimes he is so lousy, maybe sometimes he have a flu. or So we have a backup plan. And furthermore, the angels will back him up. How stupid this verse is. This is God is talking? Muslims, are you sure that this is God is talking? All of those, all of these, they want to support Muhammad against his two wives. You know, when you hear the verse this first time, you think Muhammad is going to attack the Jews. You think Muhammad is going to attack the Israeli. You think Muhammad is talking to Netanyahu or maybe to Putin or maybe to Trump. But no, he's talking only about two of his wives. And one of them, is 14 years old. Hmm? CP does not debate face to face. Don't debate voice to voice. What does that mean, guys? I mean, when I tell you Muslims are so smart, what face to face mean? I mean, what face to face? To, where is your face now? A Muslim, he can debate me only face to face. <laughs> potato Abdul if you're a prophet if you're a prophet could not debate the Christians to face to face why you can't debate me face to face let me show you guys when the Muslim he says he cannot he will not debate me unless it is a face to face when the Christians came to Muhammad to debate him face to face do you know what your prophet did he ran like a potato and I will show you that from the Quran Read it with me, Abdul. This is your prophet. The Christians, they came to him to debate him. So what Muhammad did, look what he said. If any dispute in this matter, uh, this matter about what? About Jesus. He said, now after the knowledge has come to thee, okay, say, say what? Come, 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 come. Let us gather together our sons and your sons, our women and your women, ourself and yourself, and let us urgently pray to invoke the curse of Allah in the one who lie. And you are telling me you want to debate me face to face? Why your prophet did not debate them face to face? Curse the one who's lying. This is a debate. Cursing debate. Cursing party. Okay, your turn, Abdul. Your turn. Go, take the mic. Bismillah uh, My name is Abdul, Abdul, Abdul. And I invoke Allah to make my nose longer then the lone wizard, the, 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 you know, if, if I'm lying. Okay, your turn. Okay, my name is a Christian prince. I invoke Allah, uh, if he is exist, uh, to make my mic mute. What happened? My mic is mute. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. I just invoke Allah. I just invoke Allah, guys, and my mic went to mute. It's impossible. I close the mic. 
I mean, this is a debate, and you are talking about a debate? The coward you're a prophet, he ran away. We go back to the prophet, the powerful prophet, who have all the answers. You see, when this woman in this website, she said Islam have all the answer for all the unseen, as long as she is a woman, her name is Buthayna Yunus, I'm going to show what the prophet answer for a woman. There's a guy is looking at her in a dirty way. Don't you want to see? Islam have the answers, right? Hmm. A woman, she came to the prophet and she said to him, O prophet of Allah, there is a guy in my house and he is looking at me in dirty way. So what I should do, prophet? Huh? And the woman, she have her uh, finger in her mouth. You know? Now the prophet, because he is the one who have the answer, look what he said to her. He said, Suckle him. She said, what, what, what? Walk, 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 what? Suckle him. What are you talking about, Prophet? Oh my Allah, the guy is a growing man. <laughs> she said, How I can suckle him and he is a growing man? And you are telling me the Prophet don't have answers? So your wife, she go to the prophet and there is a guy in the house. He is looking at her in a dirty way and the husband is a jealous. So what is the solution? Your wife, she have to give her nipples to this strange slave man who live in your house. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Unbelievable. If that's, this is wisdom. This is wisdom. You know, when, when the dean of the hadith in the University of Al-Azhar in Egypt, he made a fatwa that a woman, when she go in the bus, she have to suckle everybody. The people in Egypt, they went crazy. Why crazy in this guy? He should be fired, etc. He said, what's wrong with you? This is what the prophet, he ordered. For a woman to be alone with a strange man, she have to suckle him. And here we go. The proof is in the front of you. Suckle him. So if I have a neighbor, he's a Muslim, and his wife, I'm going to visit him at home. His wife, she have to suckle me? Let me go and search for Muslim neighbors in the bushes around me. Or you can search for a fatwa about the breastfeeding, you know. And by the way, the breastfeeding is, is a verse in the Quran. You see, the Muslims, because they are ashamed of that verse, they took it off. Aisha, she claimed that it is the goat who ate it. This is not a true. I don't believe in the goat story. Maybe the goat ate some of the Quran, but maybe she ate the hummus part. But why the goat ate specifically those verses? Read with me carefully. This is fishy goat. Aisha, she said, the verses of stoning and breastfeeding an adult. And a what? And, 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 and what? This is not about feeding and breastfeeding for a child. An adult, 10 times the Prophet, he ordered Muslim women to give their nipples to a stranger 10 times until he is satisfied, which means he cannot do it in once, one time, like one day. No. He have to go back word for word. So like, okay, now she give him her nipples. He starts sucking. And by the way, he do not need to suck milk because women are not, even goats don't have always milk. You see, animals, a human, it doesn't matter. They have milk only if they have babies. Not always they have milk. So this prophet is advising based on the advice of Allah. It's a verse from God. Now, where we can find this verse in the Quran?
And why this verse is gone? Obviously, they destroyed it. They took it off. It's a shame. As you see, this is Aisha is talking. Yeah, it's abrogated by five time. Okay, hold on. You know, this is actually this is even more funny. It's abrogated by five time. Where we can find the verse of five time? <laughs> How come both of them disappear? You know, you know, this is why I'm saying it's very fishy, the story, right? About the goat eating the Quran. So now the ten time is gone. Okay, what is the five time? The goat ate the ten time. What about the five time? The goat ate the five time too? Look like this goat is it knows how to read, how to write, and she is flipping specific pages. Do we have any Muslim here? Islam is a wonderful religion, very open minded, my friend. You cannot shake hands with Muslim women, but you can shake their boobs and suck it. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? <clears throat> Who is a Muslim would like to explain to us what the breastfeeding for adult? Do you really Muslims believe that if a man, he, you know, if, if your wife, she gave her breast to a stranger, he will not look at her in a dirty way? Since when? <laughs> oh, boy. I'm telling you, Islam is very nice. Yeah. But I wonder why Muslims are not practicing what the Prophet taught them. Hypocrite liars. Why you don't practice it, huh? I want to go. I, I'm, I'm not going to go anywhere, any trans transportation, when I go to the Middle East except the bus. Because if every woman in the bus is going to suckle me, that that would be horrible. What if they are not good looking, man, or not clean? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't want to think about it. Huh? All of them? No way. Islam answered the questions. Islam, answer your questions about the seen and the unseen. I like it. Yeah, right. Islam, answer anything you want. Another woman, she came to the Prophet. <clears throat> uh. Let us see. Just to show you the answers of the Prophet. He's, this guy is a... Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me show you this one. This one is very nice. As an example, Islam answers you about being clean. If you want to be clean and you are worried, you want to see a, a doctor or something, my friend, the Prophet is the best example to be Buthaina is a woman, you know, who her name is Buthaina. She answered in that website. It was said, O oh Allah Messenger, shall we reuse the water of Bida? The well will perform a lotion while in it is, which menstruation rags, flesh of dogs, and butchered are dumped? The Prophet of Allah said, Indeed, water is pure, nothing make it impure. Like, what the heck? The water is always pure. Look, guys, what is inside the water? There's menstruation rags. There's a dogs, dead dogs. There's garbage. And Muhammad confirmed that the water is always pure. Hold on. Read carefully with me. I passed by the Prophet P P B U H M F M A N G uh, Y Fi when he was performing wudu ablution 
from the will of Bidah. I said, are you performing wudu from it when garbage is thrown in it? He said, oh my brother, don't worry. Water is always pure and nothing make it impure. <laughs> and here you will notice that even this Arab guy, he was wondering, like, even we are a Bedouin, we don't do that. This guy must be crazy. And look at this story here. The people ask Allah Messenger. Oh, that, let me show you the one he's taking the shower himself. Hold on, where is the one? Hmm. Hmm. What is the one that says uh, stink? And I cannot find the hadith. Hold on. I want to find the hadith. There is a hadith where it says stink. Maybe they took it off. Well, this one is a close to the one I'm talking about. If you see here, they are describing how dirty, filthy this water is. And by the way, this is not really a well of water. It is a dump water it's a, like a sewage the, the water of the the houses goes to a lower area in the town it's a hole in the ground where all the dirty this is why those arab they are dumping their garbage there you see arab they will not dump uh, such a thing in a water to drink because water in this desert is very priceless this is just a garbage this is a sewage and because this is additional proof that Muhammad obviously is a mental person. Why in the world a person want to take a shower in such a water have dead dogs? And the water is so is so small. Look, this guy, he measured it. He measured the size of this uh, uh, swamp, little swamp. I measure it six cubit in the breath. I then ask uh, the man who opened the door of the garden, admit, etc., etc., etc. So, uh, how, how, uh, first of all, how high it is? It is to the private part. What is the height of this water? It's below the private part. So, it's less than a meter high. And what, how big it is? It is maximum six meters. And what is inside this water? dead dogs women of blood from period and garbage and it's a smell and stink so how muhammad take a shower in it any muslim can explain any abdul they ask Jean Claude Van Damme how you can maintain yourself being so good looking in this age. And he was doing interview in Al Arabiya TV in Saudi Arabia or Emirat, I think. So he said, as an example, I look at the ex the best example is the Prophet of Allah. This guy he know that those Muslims they are possessed with those stuff. So he know how to fool them. Okay, if you think Muhammad is the best example, why you don't convert to Islam Van Dam? Huh? The example is Muhammad? What is Muhammad? He takes shower with shit, excuse my language. This is shit. 
women are blood from period women are blood from period dead dogs and garbage what more is than this to be disgusted and Muhammad is the best example hmm <clears throat> Any Muslim? So my friend, Islam have answers. Okay. The Quran has no single contradiction, unlike other scriptures. <laughs> I don't want to laugh. <laughs> Any Muslim? Uh, Abu Dawood uh, 166. Okay, my friend. Uh, our friend here, he posted saying that in Abu Dawood 166, 1 to 66 is the uh, reference about Muhammad washing in his stinky water. So there is no. In here, how YouTube, they stopped my video. There is nothing wrong. This is the whole video we played. Where is the hate speech? This is violate. This video is removed for violate of our community guideline. You can go and see what the Muslims making fun of Christianity, calling us pagans, kuffar, najis, which means dirty, filthy. And we are just refuting them. And we call for no hate. We don't call for violence. We did not say we hate anyone. Yet this is a violation for the rules of YouTube. And the funny, they do that to me every few days. Every few days. This is why if you go and see my channel, I have hundreds of videos, but I don't list them because they keep putting down my videos. And they give me the same violation. And then when I fight with them, they find that there's nothing wrong with it. what kind of YouTube and what kind of company they are under the control of who is this is an American company or this is a, a, a company run by ISIS and Taliban where people cannot speak their mind no more anyone who speak against Islam they have to mute him I was a muted life this is not even complain later they were watching me live. I was doing my live broadcast what in the world wrong I said there, except to speak in my mind, refuting with reference about what Islam is about. This is what you to become. Thank you for listening.